Hey, welcome back to the channel, Getting It Done. Getting It Done Fishing. So we're gonna get it done today. We're gonna to be talking about, you know, how to hook or how to rig up or how to put a hook in any type of soft plastic. And I'm gonna go through it. So you know what, we got worm hooks, you got extra wide gap hooks. And what do you use? When do you use them? So the rule of thumb for me, what I always use is if I'm using worm, I'm using a worm hook. You know, I got some hooks over here. You got a whole slew of different things that we're gonna hook up today. A whole slew of different types of things we're gonna, we're gonna hook up and I'll show you. Oh my goodness. So, you know, basically the gist of it is, is you know, for top water, you know, if a paddle frog or a, a frog in the plastics, you wanna go extra wide uh, gap hook. So we're gonna start off with just a worm hook. And a worm hook is a little bit different. I got my packages here, you've seen. Got all my packages with, with, all my, with all my hooks in there. And, and let's go through and let's pull out a, a worm hook. So a worm hook is a little bit different. And really what you want, what you want to do on that, anytime you're fishing with any type of worm hook, it's kind of like a more of a straighter. And you want that worm to kind of be like flat up against there. It's kind of what you want out of a worm hook. You know, I only go with a three out or a four out, either the extra wide gap hook or the worm hook. Either one, that's what I go with, and it pretty much covers everything that I use. So again, it's more straight. And what you want is you want that worm to, to lay flat on that. So I'll use a Berkley. I'll start off with a Berkley. I got some other ones. Let's just start off with this one. We'll start off with a teamy one. And I'm gonna rig up a couple of these things just to kind of show you. And kind of a couple little tips and tricks that I use. Just a regular, you know, big old one. So when I use that worm hook, you know, again, I don't want to go through a lot of that head, right? I'm only going to go down to a piece of that. So we're going to go down a little bit here and we're going to get rid of some of this stuff because we're going to get to there. All right, so I'm taking that and take my worm hook and I'm just going to go right through that head. And I don't go down much. You can see how much I'm going down. I don't go down much at all. I pop it through and now I have it like that, right? I slide that thing up. I'm going to slide it all the way up to the top right where that eye comes in. I'm all slid up all the way to the top. Now here's the key. Now when I do that, I'm gonna flip that worm. So I flip that worm over. Now I have it straight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend that worm. I'm not gonna put it down. I'm gonna bend that worm a little bit and I'm gonna put that hook in. See how I got that bend in that worm? So I got that bend in that worm. And when I come back, I'm gonna slide it through. And now you can see it's pretty straight, but I'm not done yet. What I like to do is I like to bring that hook through that worm. We got that, that hook is through that worm. Now it's flat. I'm gonna bring that worm back up. And now that worm is pretty straight up and down that hook and that hook is still exposed. So when that bass comes and takes it, you can see that you got that little bit of hook right there. When that bass, bass comes up and sucks it because most of the worms, they just suck it in and they move with it. When you set that hook, boom, catching biggins, catching biggins all day all day long. Yes, sir. Getting it done. That the hook is exposed and that worm will slide right down and it's going to hook right into the fish. Now, sometimes I see people just take it like we got the hook there and they'll just bring that, they'll bring that worm up and that hook is more exposed. If you have no vegetation and you have nothing to worry about as far as getting hung up and I like to go more like that. And again, that is pretty straight up and down. And that's what a worm hook is all about. That, that worm is straight up and down. The extra wide gap hook, I could pull, the extra wide gap hook, you see how much has, it has that gap in there? You can still get that worm to sit, but there is a difference between that and that. It's gonna cause that worm not to sit as flat. And that's why you use a worm hook. Again, you see that there's a, let me see if I can get it a little bit better, but that has too much of a gap for that worm. You don't need that gap in there. There's no reason to have that gap for, for a worm. For a worm hook, basically that's, that, that worm hook is pretty, pretty straight. And that's what you want. So that worm is sitting straight up and down. You know, again, Texas rig, Carolina rig, weightless, it doesn't matter what it is. Now, when I bounce it off the bottom, I'm bringing it in a water column. If I go weightless, I go tap, 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 tap. That thing's gonna come straight across. And that, that tail is going to be moving and going. All right. So that's that worm. Let's get on to a Berkeley power bait. So again, that's the reason why you want to use, you don't want to take one worm, one hook, like an extra wide gap hook. And say, that's the only, only hook I got or only hook I'm going to use and try to rig up 
of worms. Now you can do it. It takes a little bit of practice to do an extra wide gap to put a worm on there. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying that it's not impossible. This makes it a little bit harder and that worm just doesn't sit that good. Berkeley, hook, again, just gonna go right up to that top. And it has a little nub on there on a the Berkeley and I'm gonna go right, right about that first little ridge in that worm. That's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go out, I can feel that hook and I popped it into the right around that first ridge. I don't go down any further than that. Bring it up that, that worm hook, all the way up. I'm up back by the eye. Key is, now I'm gonna turn that, see now I turn that worm. I turn it, it was like that on the back. I just turn that around, turn that worm around. Now it's flat. Now I'm gonna set, now I'm gonna bring that across. Now, all I'm doing is again, now I have that worm flat get that extra gap like that little push it backwards and now I'm going to push it forward and now I bring that hook through I always bring the hook through now that's pretty straight I had the hook exposed but that worm is pretty straight up and down that hook again I have no curvature that's that's pretty dang it's pretty straight all I do is I just take that worm and I just bring it right back up that's it I had the hook exposed a little bit now if I'm going to do vegetation or I don't want to get hooked up all I'm going to do is pretty much 90% of the time, that's how I'm fishing with that hook. Just a little bit exposed. If I don't want that hook exposed, I already have that hole in that worm. So when that bass sucks it in, it'll take it and it's already, that, has, that hook has nothing to go through. Because again, there's no, there's no material to stop it. So it sucks it in, squeezes it, and it brings it down. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that worm up a little bit. Up, 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 up. And now that worm... Bring it up by the eye, push it up to the eye a little bit. Now that worm is exactly straight up and down and it's pretty much weedless because I buried that hook. It's still, it's barely, 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 you can barely feel it uh, out of that worm. And that way it's pretty much 100% weedless. Again, if I do an extra wide gap hook, I kind of show you. So that's straight up and down. That's why you use worm hooks. Again, an extra wide gap hook. I do the extra wide gap hook. Can I get it? I could probably get it, but I'm gonna go same thing up through the head, up through the first ridge, bring that back up and around. And then see, then it has that like the little ridge, and I gotta bring it back. And now I'm gonna bend it. Bring it through. I'm not worried about weedless. You could do an extra wide gap, but that hook is way exposed. I don't like that at all. That's not what I want. I don't want anything like that. That's going to get snagged up on anything. I don't want that. The extra wide gap hook, if I want to bring that thing back up and get that thing exposed, you could do it. But that hook, there's way too much gap in there. And a lot of times when that's coming through the water, it will wobble way too much. When I'm popping that thing, or even a Texas rig or a Carolina rig, when I'm popping it, that extra wide, I mean, just the feel of it, it's just off. It, it's just, it's too much... The weight of that hook is way too heavy and it starts just to make that worm go to the either side and that's not what you want. That's why you want worm hooks. Again, they're more up and down versus the extra wide gap. Now, can you fish like that? Yeah, are you gonna catch bass? Yes. Is it the ideal? No, it's not. You wanna be 100% correct? You gotta go with the worm hook. That, that has too much weight on the back. There's too much, there's too much steel or, or metal and that, and that weight is, is not gonna give you a, a true worm action that you're looking for so that's that now the extra wide gap now if i say hey i only have worm hooks and i got a zoom paddle frog or i got a paddle frog it's not going to work because you need that gap to go up and get that material you got that ridge that ridge is where the hook is going to go through so you can go up this thing's pretty destroyed but i'll get this thing to work don't worry about it. getting it done son yes sir flipping around you gotta just flip that hook and that's why you have that, that, that gap in there. I'm gonna flip that, flip that hook. I'm gonna squeeze that thing. And now I'm gonna come back up through the belly. This one thing pretty destroyed, but get that thing up and through. Still some pretty thick material. And now when I bring that up, I bring that frog up. I, that, that, you have the extra wide gap because now that's the way it's gonna come through. And you have, because that material, it's not going to go up. If you do it with a, I'll just poke myself. Nice. 
That's why you're using extra wide gap hook. That, that worm hook does not have a big enough gap to take that material. All right, so again, any type of worms, you're going with the, the worm hook. Let me see, get rid of this thing really quick. That one's gone. You know, Creature Cross, I've used a lot of these. I've talked a lot about these. These things just get it done. Just get it done, son. I'll grab the yellow. Again, if I wanted to rig something on a worm hook, the material to go through it, there's not enough, there's not enough of the gap of the hook to get that hook up out of that material. The extra wide gap has has enough. And again, show you really quick. Again, right up through the head of any worm or any type of soft plastics, up through the head, bring that up up to the eye, flip it around. It has that little slot in there. Bring that through, bring it down. As you can see, bring that hook through that material. A lot of times that material is spongy. And I'm stuck on a piece of, oh, all right. Now I bring that hook, and I bring that, that hook back in, it's covered. You see, I don't really have, see on that, I don't really have much, much gap. There's no way you'd be able to do it with a worm hook. So, you know, there is a, there is a place, you have to have both, especially if you're fishing a lot of soft plastics and you're going through it. And I'll go through another one really quick. So again, that's extra wide gap hook. Um, you know, you, you cannot, do it with this. I'll show you the difference. I guess I'll show it to you. If I wanted to do it with a with a worm hook, worm hook's really tough. So I'm gonna do it with a worm hook. Same same thing. Up through, slide it up, going up through that worm hook. Twist the head. Get yourself a little bit of gap. Squeeze that a little bit. Come up and through. And I could tell you just from the feel of this thing. Okay. You don't have, you see that bottom, that hook is pretty much like all the way up in there. Like, and, and that's not what I want. It's not gonna give a, you really want that hook to kind of stick out to kind of guide that stuff or to guide these things because when that bass hits, you just, I mean, I'm all the way in and that hook is barely, I'm all the way down to the bottom of that worm hook and that hook is barely exposed. And again, you're gonna have to have a lot of squeeze and a lot of pressure from that bass in order to get that hook exposed, and you're gonna miss a lot of bass. That's the key to it. You use a worm hook on these things, you don't have a lot of gap, and when that bass squeezes it, and that hook's only exposed a little bit like that, that's really hard to set that hook and really hard to catch that bass. Do not do that. Don't, don't, take, one, don't, take, don't take one hook and say, this is gonna be my end all the be all hooks, and, and I'm not using anything else. Extra wide gap hooks, use them for like, you know, paddle frogs, frogs, uh, like these creature crawls, anything that's really thick is, is where you want to use is where you want to use the extra wide gap. All your worms is is where you want to use a worm hook. Again, the difference between a worm hook and an extra wide gap, as you can see, they're both three odds, but you can see there's a big huge gap on these. Obviously, extra wide gap versus a worm hook. The worm will just stay straight on that and it'll give you the better action. You know, a bambito bug. You know, I, I know, like if you want to do a Texas rig or Carolina rig with the Van Beetle bug, the same thing. My recommendation from a Van, Van Beetle bug, I take a Van Beetle bug, and I put, pop this bad boy there, and I got a Van Beetle bug. It, 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 it's, it's a little thicker. It's not as, you know, it's a little thicker. Can you stick a, can you go with a, a worm hook? Now, some, some baits you could go back with either one. Again, it's hooking it up the same way through its head, a little bit further down, up to the eye. Rotate, rotate that, right? Because that's how I came up. I'm gonna rotate, rotate that hook. So rotate it. Now I have, now I have it like that. Squeeze it, I'm coming down. And now I got it through. And now I'm just gonna pop that hook through. So I have something to go through. And bring that up back by the eye. And you could go something like something like that. So Van Beetle bug on, on a worm hook. You know, my recommendation if you're gonna go like more on the bugs and you're gonna use like a Carolina rig or a Texas rig or something that's gonna you know push that down. You know, again, I like to have a little bit of gap, that's just me. It's easier, it's easier to to hook it up or to you know to put a hook through it again, up through the head, not really going up through, all the way up through the, the eye. Bring it around the eye, swing that thing around, swing the thing around. Got got the gap in there. I push it through, make sure I have a hook, and then pack it back up. And I, that's what I like to go. If I'm using a Van Beetle bug, I use an extra wide hook. That's what I use. The worm hook is only, I only use a worm hook only for worms. It just gives you the better, worm sits flat on there. 
yes, you, you can use a, an extra wide gap. It's just that you can just see that kind of, well, even this will kind of twist a little bit. You know, it twists, just, there's too much gap or too much weight in here. And when you're taking that worm and you're pushing it through, it kind of has a tendency to wobble each way. They go with a worm hook. Again, any type of worm hook, that's, that's more straight. Any type of extra wide gap, uh, you know, you can, should be able to tell the difference between the two. A lot of times you don't like on team when you're looking for, for hooks. Again, just look at the hook. Anything with that gap is an extra wide. That worm hook has that little, that little ridge right there. And again, the point of it is a head sits on there, the body sits on there, and that's pretty straight. Um, so that's what it is. All right, so I hope this helps. Again, if you're a big worm fisherman or you're having struggles with worms, try a different, make sure you're using a worm hook. Again, go up right through the first ridge, put it up through the eye, turn it, get yourself some, you know, get a little bit of gap in there when you're putting that hook. So when you stretch, when that hook comes through, then it's sitting out straight. Again, one last time, I'll do it. Worm hook up through the head. I'm just going up through that first. Slides it all the way up to that the eye. When I get up through the eye, twist it. Now, now I'm straight. I'm going to twist it, put that little gap in there. You see how I squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Come through. Bring that hook. Hook, make sure the hook is exposed. Bring that back up. Now you have a perfect. That setup is perfect. Carolina, Texas rig, weightless, that's just money. You're getting it done all day long. Gonna give you the best action and, and you're just gonna get it done. All right, I hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll check you later. All right, out.